have at last reached the end of our journey together. In reflecting on abnormal psychology, most students find it to be a fascinating yet contentious field of study. In good measure, this is because there are so many ways of classifying, conceptualizing, and rectifying problems identified as abnormal. Diagnostic, biological, psychological, and sociocultural perspectives all have their own ways of thinking about what constitute problems, what causes them, and how best to remedy them. No doubt, this course has exposed you to many perspectives that take very different stances in defining, theorizing about, researching, and addressing a multitude of presenting problems. Certainly, when it comes to different perspectives, contrasting doesn't necessarily mean incompatible. There are countless efforts to integrate various perspectives. Along these lines, many clinicians and researchers consider themselves advocates of a biopsychosocial model of abnormality. This model holds that presenting problems are an interaction among biological, psychological, and social factors, and that trying to reduce abnormality to just one of these factors is simplistic and counterproductive. The biopsychosocial model became popular in the 1980s and 90s, with even the DSM espousing it as an integrative way of thinking about its proposed disorders. The biopsychosocial model appeals to those who seek a respite from long-standing conflicts among seemingly irreconcilable perspectives. Integration at last, you say? Well, not so fast. If you've learned anything from this course, it's that there's always a contrasting point of view even on integrative efforts like the biopsychosocial model. Critics of the model complain that it leads to a mindless eclecticism. Eclecticism is an approach in which clinicians draw from multiple theories depending on what's useful in the moment. To critics, eclecticism leads to an unreflective and therefore dangerous pluralism in which one is free to just pick whatever intervention one likes without thoroughly thinking things through. Eclecticism, its critics contend, borders on anarchy one can emphasize the bio, the psycho, or the social, depending on one's personal predilections. But there's no rationale as to why one heads in one direction or another in deciding what interventions to ultimately use. Not everyone has given up on the biopsychosocial approach. Some argue that it needs to be revived and then more thoroughly developed so that it incorporates both medical and humanistic threads. Whether this can or will be done, remains to be seen. Surely, we aren't going to resolve debate over the biopsychosocial model by the end of this video. But such debate serves as one final reminder that even with ongoing efforts at integration, the field of abnormal psychology will continue to be one where contrasting perspectives reign and where there are many ways to think about and deal with presenting problems. Hopefully, this course has whet your appetite to further explore the perspectives we've discussed even if your journey doesn't lead to simple and singular answers. You may recall George Kelly, the 20th century American psychologist who was mentioned in several chapters of Abnormal Psychology Contrasting Perspectives. Kelly once remarked that the questions we ask are often more important than the answers that we give them. There are a lot of questions in abnormal psychology, and depending on the perspective of the person responding, there are many different answers to those questions. Learning to live with ambiguity and uncertainty is par for the abnormal psychology course. Sometimes, the more you know, the less you know for sure. Hopefully, your knowledge of abnormal psychology has expanded sufficiently to make you keenly aware of how many questions remain to be asked. <laughs>